Hello friends and uh, welcome. So today will be the first session of uh, Azure for weekend batch. So uh, let me put down some ground rules for this training so that I'll answer your questions and then from there uh, we're going to proceed. Uh, <clears throat> So first thing will be uh, this will be only weekend session as you know and uh, it will be my expectation is it will go to somewhere like uh, anywhere between 8 to 10 weekends and every day uh, it will be like two and a half hour the session will be two and a half. but today it will be only two hours uh, from tomorrow it will be two and a half hour now okay. we are going on uh, and the second thing is you need be you need to be on the mute actually unless uh, have some questions I'll let you I'll going to give it to you uh, the last right I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the, the questions related uh, to the career as well as how, what is the roadmap for next uh, few days or, or how exactly you need to take up this course and everything and how exactly uh, because you should not think about thinking that only learning Azure administration is going to solve all the problems. This is the first step actually and without automation nothing is going to be achieved and uh, the CV even won't get shortlisted and situation like this if somebody people trying to move out of the job to a different job and we have the problems going on outside so it will be very tough to get the CV get shortlisted so <clears throat> without having automation it will be very tough but I'll also explain that one as well now step one please uh, go on mute I'm going to mute everyone um, hold on and so the agenda for today is uh, we're going to see uh, what are the different clouds and uh, the purpose actually why exactly you should get trained on uh, on Azure what are the benefits or I can say like what are the disadvantage if you don't uh, <clears throat> and second thing is we're going to create an account which is very much essential in order to do the practice and third is we're going to understand the basic building blocks of uh, uh, Azure and finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you to ask your doubts not only technical guys So also your career related. So before going further uh, Let me give you the introduction of myself uh, so that you understand who exactly is your uh, Instructor, so I'm Sri Harsha and uh, I have 15 years of experience and experience really doesn't count only your technical uh, knowledge will get count here second thing is I'm, I'm not a associate to any training institute guys. I'm not an institute. I'm actually an architect doing everyday things in DevOps AWS VMware a lot of stuff actually, okay, so uh, So if you think that a regular training a regular trainer, no, uh, I always works on what I'm teaching and uh, And I'm coming from a very very strong infrastructure background. Uh, I'm not a core developer since I know a little bit of development, but I'm very very uh, core infrastructure person starting from Windows Linux virtualization storage backup networks so what is happening at the back end of uh, uh, either any cloud uh, I know that one so at hardware level what is happening at uh, software level what is happening and everything so I try to share that knowledge now and uh, right now you can put my name on the LinkedIn you'll get all the details what exactly I'm doing so you really don't need to explain everything so you just put see her you'll get the LinkedIn but you don't get the pick so but you, you get my profile right now let's go ahead and uh, first understand the roadmap how exactly you need to study in order to uh, in order to either change the job as well as or if you are in a different domain you want to move the domain or upgrade yourself or upskill yourself in order to change the job or if you are a fresher or you don't have a job get into the job now I'm not going to straight tap into Azure first of all first we need to understand what is your roadmap this is the roadmap I'm going to explain now uh, either you study Azure the first way is and then DevOps and then AWS or AWS DevOps and finally Azure now if you want to replace that with GCP you can do that one the problem is if you see uh, most of the cloud environments or or is being almost half of that is consumed by AWS or Azure so the problem is if you're trying to if you're trying to uh, apply some job right so either most of the jobs falls under either AWS or Azure so what will happen GCP is very less it is coming up but it will take a lot of time in order to cope up with these two guys so that time will give you some 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 bandwidth to even study GCP if you are able to manage AWS and Azure then I think managing of GCP is pretty easy so these two are vital so some 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 of my friends who are GCP admins they contradict that one so end of the day 
so I, i'm not going to talk anything about this uh, like i'm not going to challenge them but i simply going to say like uh, uh <clears throat> so i'll say bat gartner magic quadrant for public clouds so it the the data speaks actually so i'm not going to challenge and that is good this is bad i'm going to uh, simply if you see <clears throat> this is the picture so amazon at the top and this this gap is coming very very less guys so amazon and microsoft it is getting reduced to very less uh, it, it may be on a couple of years they both will be same and uh, google is still a leader but it's a far far behind please be on mute okay hold on a second don't unmute yourself at the last you can unmute if you have a doubt you can unmute and let me know okay so i uh, first uh, i understand so people will have some uh, problem or uh, challenges in uh, in managing the tool but anyway this is the reason i'm actually proposing aws as well as as well as microsoft yes the third comes the google but what will happen once you learn this too and working you will get some time so then you can concentrate on this one okay so <clears throat> that is why i'm going to propose so now what exactly devops is doing in here now don't ever expect when you join some company so don't expect if you want to create a virtual machine you go to the portal and you're going to do something like this uh, come here uh, create a virtual machine select all this you know this is kids work no one is expecting you to go select one by one if i ask you to deploy some 200 machines if you do in this way for next one week right so uh, you really don't need, you can't call yourself as a azure engineer we need to call ourselves as a 10th class 10th class kid actually that is not expected out of you now so the portal let, let me make uh, make a mental <clears throat> mental uh, conclusion here uh, the portal is not for deploying things the portal is only here to just see what is the status of any resource for example the portal is not there to go ahead and uh, create machines but just to see this is a windows vm 16 gb okay this ip address is this, this is a public ip this is running that's it so this is what at least in my real-time environments in my office i'm using for this purpose oc i'm not deploying any virtual machine or any virtual network any storage account anything from here everything goes to the devops pipeline that means you automate the things now that is the reason so if you take aws and azure as a uh, right hand and the left hand right devops is your eyes basically now devops will help you to automate things here so for an example as i said if you want to deploy the 100 machine 100 virtual machines if you want to do it manually it might take like uh, one or two days but in devops it might take less than an hour because you're going to script everything automate everything and uh, use the code again and again and again reusable code so what that will do that will that will actually uh, <clears throat> more efficient than doing manually because you might you might leave the company or uh, or the uh, you might forgot the command or you might forgot what exactly you did a one month back but if you automate everything it will be in script scripts will be version control using github or uh, azure devops and you can always go back and refer check it out what exactly is happening so your roadmap should be this one since we are starting with azure then it will be devops and then aws you can do anywhere guys it's not mandatory you need to do with my course with me right but you need can do anywhere but follow this one then the, the your resume will have a good weight and i think the shortlisting will get easy knowing only one aws i always keep repeating this one for every course actually every student actually knowing at least once is not going to solve your problem let me tell you people tell me that i know windows plus azure windows plus azure and people some people will say i know azure plus uh, linux plus aws here so can't i get a job see knowing windows or linux is not a skill okay knowing no windows or linux is not a skill it's you know about operating system it's a basic it's a fundamental okay but if, if you cook dal kichdi and you don't expect to say i'm a master chef 2020 no everybody can cook a dal kichdi okay similarly you don't cook rice and say that one i'm actually a chef right so cooking rice is simply like it's a basic fundamental of cooking so similarly understanding or having a basic knowledge of or knowledge of windows and linux means you know fundamentals that's it it's not a skill by the way now this is a skill see it, linux and windows is a skill five or ten years before now it's not a skill it's a it's a basic things now the skill is aws the problem is knowing one though so if you go for interview what will happen if uh, you can only apply for interviews where people are using aws you are not allowed to uh, go for any interview with azure so imagine if you have something like this actually 
then this will give you the edge actually this is skill and finally this is this is how you need to do things so don't don't expect windows plus azure is a skill and linux plus aws is going to be a super it's a skill but it's not a super duper skill where uh, interview calls will be pouring on you it's not going to happen guys so with this or this interview calls will be pouring on you because many people are learning some aws azure devops but most probably only people are sticking to either azure or aws or devops only limited people who got trained like this they got already placed and uh, and if you and you need to train it properly you need to do a hell lot of practice to have a hands-on because it's, it's a tough thing to deal with the devops and all these things okay next thing is uh, since we are starting with azure right uh, so initially what we're going to do is first we're going to create the uh, <clears throat> Uh, create the account before that one. This is some people will say like this if I know AWS I can manage the Azure if I know Azure I can manage the AWS that is only true until it is uh, Half the half the level actually it's not completely true. Why because let me tell you Microsoft is a pioneer of operating system or applications so Microsoft is not a fool to actually mimic or create a duplicate of AWS so if it is creating just duplicate of AWS, it will become a uh, then Azure become iPhone and uh, a, uh, sorry AWS become iPhone and uh, Azure will be a China phone. Okay, that is not the case here. So the concentration is AWS is mostly their concentration is mostly into infra as a service, which we are going to talk later, which is IAS. Now Azure is doing in different way actually. Microsoft Azure they have infra as a service okay they have infra as service but their main concentration is platform as a service platform as a service i'm going to say pass actually okay uh, which we we're going to talk it and plus they also have software as a service which is office 365 which is uh, aws is not having now if somebody is trying to say I mean everyone have their own opinions, uh, but if somebody is trying to say like uh, uh, Knowing AWS it is it is easy for me to Azure and so and software or service everything It's not true guys both are not same just because Rolls-Royce has four wheels as well as uh, Ambassador has four wheels doesn't mean that both cars are same So there is a difference right same way here So the concentration of AWS is mostly into infrastructure as a service Whereas Azure concentration is primarily on platform as a service and a software as a service Okay, so what are these? What are these code words? The, what are these jargons? IAS, PaaS, SaaS. Let's discuss about that one at a high level view. Uh, it's, it's not going to help you in interview, but you should understand why I'm calling this IAS, PaaS, and SaaS. Okay. Now let's let's stick to IAS. Okay, which is infra as a service. Now, what I do is I always since I train people in AWS and Azure, right? So I always compare uh, infrastructure as a service as, as, as a brand new flat you bought. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> you want to suffer yourself for the next 20 years. So you got a home loan and then uh, you bought a flat, for example. I'm just kidding. Okay, so you just you just got a flat. Uh, imagine when you buy a flat and you're doing the housewarming uh, ceremony, right? What exactly you find inside your home? Nothing zero. Nothing will be there, right? So it's a new flat. So apart from windows as well as doors, right? You won't find anything now So what exactly builder is doing builder is actually handovering only your flat Similarly infrastructure as a service the vendor CSP cloud service provider will Will provide only Only infra Such as you can say like compute Memory see if I can simply say compute. Okay, so compute networks Firewalls storage, etc Etc only the infrastructure so okay fine so what exactly is pass before coming to that one that means the CSP will give you infra that means CSP will provide a virtual machine with OS, memory, network, CPU, etc. With that, etc. But, but, but CSP 
don't handle your application this is the most important part now what exactly this cloud service provider will do you go and say that one here uh, i'll go here and say that one see i i will i will create a new virtual machine something like this okay uh, windows vm is there right i create this one now the service provider will give you the vm he'll give you the uh, like a, similar to like this a windows 16 gb see this is the same machine which you are able to see the screen right the display is coming right so what i do is i actually speak from my laptop but the the screen sharing is coming from a azure azure machine actually so that is this machine actually so you don't have a uh, the believe right let's let, let me show it to you if i type if i type host name see this win 16 gb win 16 gb so this is the same server i'm actually sharing my screen because it will be fast and uh, something goes wrong with my internet connection is still the meeting will be up and running that is the reason now when you go ahead and uh, add the machine here right now uh, in our case the cloud service provider with microsoft azure the azure will give you a virtual machine giving some ram cpu and everything something like this so if you go inside right they're going to offer you something like here uh, this is uh, standard b4s 4 cpu and 16 gigs of ram actually uh, which going to cost to 16 rupees per hour right now what exactly you find inside the virtual machine nothing they just give you the vanilla flavor os actually you don't find any applications and nothing now in the infrastructure as a service background so if you request for some infrastructure they will give you the infrastructure and they they real they are not going to sorry this one they are not going to support IAS, they are not going to support what you are going to in, implement on this server for example imagine i'm going to install a microsoft sql see see uh, my is, windows is an operating system and the machine is given by as part of iis if i install the uh, microsoft sql server or oracle or or some sort of an uh, xyz application right so if there is some problem with that application or a database if i ring uh, azure saying that one my database is not working properly or, or the csp the cloud service provider saying that one you have provided me the virtual machine i installed some xyz application and it is not operating properly now what exactly they're going to say is it's not their support uh, agreement actually in the support agreement in the ias right they will say we are responsible for the infrastructure only we are not responsible for your application which is installed on your server so you need to dial appropriate vendor something like even even the server is in microsoft azure but if you install a microsoft sql server you need to call the sql support azure will say we are not supporting because this falls under iaas and the applications are not part of the service level agreement or agreement between the customer so the reason you can ask me uh, why exactly they, they are not actually supporting application let me tell you guys every given day there are thousands of applications people are developing around the world if the if the cloud service provider starts supporting applications it will be a nightmare because uh, there are like almost like uh, like uh, uh, millions of applications who get trained on that one how do you know something is working that's why only apart from known very good applications many cloud service providers are not going to support any applications actually you need to talk to the application vendor so as i said infrastructure as a service they are going to offer only infrastructure nothing more now this 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 is good actually let me tell you infrastructure as a service is a good deal when you want to in, be in full control when you need full control what do you mean by full control that means you installing application patching rebooting full control right IAS is good it is very good that means you can customize whatever you like now later we have uh, the other thing called as platform as a service now now imagine if you are a startup okay i'll tell you a, a example which we are using actually uh, we are working on an automation project and automation project the requirement is every client should have four environments the environments is dev sit uat and prod these are the four environments every customer should got uh, should be, should have actually and each environment we need to have a database in that one now imagine like that into i need to do this for somewhere like 20 clients i need to get 20 clients that means that means now i'm getting somewhere around like 80 environments basically literally i need to build 80 environments guys so each environment that means i require 80 databases if i start using iaas it's going to uh, take a long time because first i need to deploy the machine 